One unusual and cathartic feeling is watching enormous automated industrial machines work. However, some of these machines are so much more than just calming to observe. They are truly remarkable. These are the most fulfilling factory machines that will amaze you. Cow Hoof Trimming Machine Although that may be the cow's strangest experience ever, it speeds up procedures. There are countless amounts of studies on the web stressing just how important proper functional and therapeutic hoof trimming is for a cow with there being claims that it can achieve a whole heap of benefits, such as preventing lameness, improving milk production, and just general improvement in the dairy cow's well-being. Although to be fair, this all means nothing to the cow, which is being tipped on its side by a mechanical device on the back of a truck. You heard that correctly, the farber ties the cow to the machine, which then pulls it onto its side on the back of the truck with its legs strapped in. The farber can then start the difficult process of chipping away at the cow's hooves knowing that there is minimal possibility of a surprise cow attack. Braiding Machine for Carbon Fiber This carbon fiber braiding machine makes wrapping objects look like a work of art. It is a huge circular device with multiple strings of carbon fiber attached that move in such a way that the object being passed through is covered in this excellent layer of carbon fiber that is like a carpet. Imagine a spider casting a web mixed with the knitting skill of a professional grandmother mixed in with some delightful mechanical brilliance. When this machine is in use, it resembles a bionic spider casting a complexly built web, but instead of collecting flies, it wraps heavy items. I'd probably just wrap it in Christmas wrapping paper and call it a day if I tried to do the same thing by hand. But hey, that's why I make these movies instead of having my work appear in them. Whoever built this machine deserves a slap on the back as well as being pleasurable to see. Sesam 100 A business in New York has developed one of the most amazing machines, a semi-automated robot that can lay bricks up to four times faster than a person can. It will be available for purchase in September. The semi-automated mason system, developed and tested on construction sites over the course of eight years by New York-based construction robotics, costs $500,000. The system, which may be ordered, has a robotic arm that can pick up bricks, apply mortar, and then place each brick where it is needed to form a wall. It can lay between 800 and 1,200 bricks per day, in comparison, a human mason can only lay roughly 300 to 500 bricks a day. TBM, a device that excavates circular tunnels through a variety of soil and rock layers, is a tunnel boring machine, sometimes known as a mole. They can also be used for micro tunneling. They have the power to drill through even hard rock and sand. Micro TBMs were used to build tunnels with diameters as small as 1 meter, up to 19.25 meters. Tunnels with a diameter of less than or equal to 1 meter are often constructed without the use of TBMs using horizontal directional drilling or trenchless construction methods. In place of traditional manual mining, in soil and drilling and blasting techniques in rock, tunnel boring machines are utilized. TBMs offer the advantages of minimizing ground disturbance and creating a smooth tunnel wall. This greatly lowers the cost of lining the tunnel and qualifies them for usage in densely populated areas. The initial expense is the main drawback. TBMs can be challenging to transport and are expensive to build. The relative cost of tunnel boring equipment against drill and blast techniques decreases with tunnel length. This is due to the fact that assuming TBMs function properly, tunneling with them is significantly more efficient and leads to faster completion times. P380. For many years, bridge inspection devices have been effectively deployed on a wide number of road, two-way, and railway vehicles. They are distinctive due to their vast operational range, both above and below track level. These machines, which have electrical, hydraulic, and pneumatic energy built into the workman baskets, can also be used to take material samples and do minor repairs. HPW Dust. Small pieces of debris can be collected by newer street sweepers. Today's street sweepers are frequently PM10 certified, which means they can gather and hold particles smaller than 10 microns. Despite technological advances, the mechanical broom type street sweeper still makes up around 90% of all street sweepers utilized in the United States today. Modern street sweepers come with water tanks and sprayers that are used to break up debris and lessen dust. 
The main collection area where the debris is collected by the brooms is vacuumed and pumped into a collection bin or hopper. Road Zipper A heavy vehicle used to transfer concrete lane dividers such as jersey barriers, which are employed to relieve traffic congestion during rush hours is referred to as a barrier transfer machine, also known as a zipper machine or road zipper. They are transiently used in many other cities during building. Zipper lanes is another name for the lanes that the machine makes. Barrier systems have the advantage of preventing vehicle crashes caused by drivers crossing over into the opposing traffic flow, as opposed to alternative lane control treatments such as traffic cones or overhead directional lights. Lane widths could potentially be significantly narrower, which is a drawback. Panther Airport crash tenders are among the most spectacular and powerful machines. They can travel over long distances, have strong high-capacity pumps and water-slash-foam cannons, carry significant amounts of water and firefighting foam, have pretty decent acceleration, and can navigate rugged terrain outside the airport area. They can be attached to wheeled chassis with 4x4, 6x6, or even 8x8 wheels. The 8x8 wheel unit may have all four wheels at the front of the vehicle rotating the truck in order to reduce their turning radius. In order to knock down the fire more quickly, more recent airport crash tenders additionally feature twin agent nozzles slash injection systems that inject a stream of purple K dry chemical into the AFFF foam stream. In cases where a clean agent must be used, some additionally feature halotron tanks with hand lines. These characteristics enable airport crash tenders to quickly reach an airplane and extinguish major burns involving jet fuel. Some tenders have an elevated extended extinguishing arm that allows them to raise a water or foam cannon into the air at a height of roughly 10 to 20 meters in order to put out a fire inside the fuselage. According to the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board, certain arms include strengthened nozzles known as snozzles that are used to pierce an airplane's fuselage and distribute AFFF to extinguish fire inside the cabin or cargo area. 901 TX The Komatsu 901 TX was built from the ground up to be one of the most amazing and effective thinning machines in the world. It has an unequal performance and maneuverability combination that maximizes its effectiveness while reducing its impact on the forest. Lifting ability stance clearance larger productivity at maximum reach comes from a new higher capacity crane capable of a greater lift of 170 kilonewton meter. Mobility is improved and the environmental effect is minimized because of the high ground clearance of 635 millimeters. The improved climbing ability, outstanding maneuverability, and smooth ride of the new Komatsu Comfort Boggy are all guaranteed. Class DD-14 Japanese National Railways, then East Japan Railway Company, operated the Class DD-14, an extraordinary machine with a BB wheel configuration diesel hydraulic locomotive type, in Japan as a self-propelled rotating snowplow unit from 1961 until 2015. The Class DD-14 locomotives were single-end cab designs with rotating snowplow units at the cab end and were based on the previous Class DD-13 6th batch locomotives. It was the company's first rotary snowplow powered by diesel. Two 500-horsepower diesel engines powered the locomotives. The unit could be operated in multiples with a second locomotive allowing both engines to drive the rotary snowplow giving a snow-clearing capacity of roughly 4,000 tons per hour. One engine could be used for propulsion while the other drove the rotary snowplow unit, giving a snow-clearing capacity of about 3,000 tons per hour. To watch more incredible videos like this, subscribe to our channel.